Now you'll know if you've got one of these Agilent U2000 series USB power sensors that uh, not only is it a power sensor, but in fact it's a complete power sensor and power meter all combined in the one unit. And in fact the connector on the end, rather than being a, a normal power sensor connector, is a USB plug. So you just plug the unit into your laptop PC and it converts it into a microwave power meter. In this case I'm using the U2002A which covers 50 megahertz to 24 gigahertz. But you can also plug them directly into Agilent's handheld spectrum analyzers. We just press the mode key and select power meter and I'll plug the USB lead into the USB port on the analyzer. You'll see the power sensor has been recognized and is initializing. And it's a good time to point out that unlike a normal power sensor and meter whereby you have to uh, manually enter the calibration factors for that particular sensor into the meter to get an accurate measurement, uh, with the U2000 series the power factors are automatically loaded in, they're stored in memory inside the unit, plus you don't have to uh, zero or calibrate the sensor, the, it's auto zeroing, auto calibrating. So the sensor is now recognized and it's all working. So let's connect some RF to the sensor input. Now you may ask the question, why would we want to use one of these microwave power sensors with a handheld spectrum analyzer? Well, there's a couple of good reasons. First of all, here I've got a seven gigahertz spectrum analyzer, but in fact, I'm measuring a microwave signal up at 21 gigahertz. So first of all, it extends the frequency range for amplitude measurements of the RF spectrum. Secondly, a power meter is always going to make a far more accurate measurement than any spectrum analyzer ever can. So with our handheld spectrum analyzer and the U2000 sensor, we can make RF level measurements with the ultimate accuracy. Now don't forget, before we start making an accurate measurement, we do need to tell the analyzer what frequency the signal is that we're measuring so that it can load the correct calibration constant. So I'll just press Measure Setup and select Frequency and I'll enter 21 gigahertz. And now we're making an accurate calibrated power meter measurement of our 21 gigahertz signal. Now, as well as the graphical display here with the meter, you'll see as the level goes up and down, such as in the situation of microwave fading, we can see the level decreasing and increasing. It shows the measured value in dBm and also in watts, in this case, eight microwatts. It also shows the minimum value or minimum amplitude that the unit has seen since we started making the measurement and also the maximum. Again, very useful if we're trying to characterize path loss or fading situations. But what's even better, if I press return and press Mesh display, you'll see here that we can change the display mode to a chart recorder. On the chart recorder display, we have time on the x-axis and power in dBm on the y-axis. So if we're trying to track, again, a microwave fading situation, as the level drops down, you can see that we are recording that on the chart recorder display. And of course, we can then save that historical record of the changes in microwave power level to the internal memory of the analyzer. If you'd like further information on these products, including demonstration guides, operating manuals or application notes, please visit the website shown below.